we need to have an important conversation. I am sick and tired of so many community leaders and creators talking about how AI is going to destroy community. Now, I'll be honest with you, I do think that it has its negative impact for sure, but there are many opportunities for us in leveraging AI to create stronger connections and more thriving communities. We're going to dive into those in this episode. You do not want to miss this. In fact, this is probably one you're going to want to listen to with your entire team. Welcome back to the Community Creator Show. I am feeling renewed and refreshed coming back from a vacation with my family in Bozeman, Montana. I didn't get to ski this time, but I really enjoyed watching my kids ski and honestly just breathing the mountain fresh air, having my computer shut for a few days and getting to think, even just being on a plane, having to have my kids asleep in my lap and helping them with iPads and whatever, not being able to really do anything for myself, right? I just had the space to sit and stare and think. And I wanna have a conversation with you today about something that is on my mind. And I know a lot of people are talking about this. We've had episodes about this before. In fact, a while ago, we had a really great interview with Dr. Jackie, who is an expert in the area of artificial intelligence, who came and talked to us about the implications for our world as we know it, which was very eye-opening. In fact, she's really involved with government agencies and all of this. So she was able to give us some insight that most people aren't. But more and more, I'm seeing a lot of fear around AI. Now, don't get me wrong. Apple, at the time of this release, Apple just recently released their new headset. I absolutely hate it. I'm going to be honest with you. Like I know there are so many good implications of this headset and what it can do, but what I hate about it is the way they're marketing it. In the commercial, there is a dad wearing this Apple goggle set as he's interacting with his son. And to me, it's just, it's heartbreaking to think that we may be in a world where people on trains and buses and cooking dinner for their kids You can't even see their eyes. You can't even connect to them on a human to human level. And here's the thing, scientifically proven that eye to eye connection, that in-person eye to eye connection does something magical in our bodies. And so it's a sad day when that might be hidden. I mean, we already took away the ears by having Apple AirPods or whatever in your ears all the time, but to take away that other sense of that connection is a little disturbing for me, honestly. So I love the idea of using it for gaming. I love the idea of using it for spatial computing, for architectural design, for all of these really cool things that I can be used for temporary connecting to create a more immersive experience in something like used to be Second Life, which was, you know, just on your computer, connecting with people with these little avatars that potentially we could do this in a more interactive way. I love the idea of it for things like fitness, but what I don't love is the idea for it really changing the way we interact day to day with the humans in our lives, especially our kids. So that is scary to me. That is something that I don't like. But I don't think that AI is the big bad guy. I believe that we can leverage it in incredible ways. And that's what I want to talk about today, because I know a lot of community creators are afraid of it. They're shying away from it. They believe that it is going to squash community online as we know it, or that it's going to take away their job as a community manager. And honestly, Honestly, some of that is true, but we are always at risk of being forgotten, of being irrelevant if we are not changing with the technology that is coming. So if you used to be a community manager of in-person communities and you haven't learned how to cultivate and manage communities online, guess what? Your job is probably obsolete at this point. If you haven't learned how to use video technology and live technology and interactive video and small group technology yet to connect your community, then your community is on the verge of becoming obsolete, right? We always have to change and adapt and innovate with the technology that comes while remaining grounded in our values, while remaining grounded 
in our intentions and purpose behind that community. So I was recently reading this article and I want to pull it up because I don't want to like, you know, put words in somebody's mouth, but here's another kind of community person who's in a tech policy blog is talking about, well, AI degrade online communities. And I'm reading this article. I've read it a couple times now because I'm just like, really? Is that the only thing that we see with AI? And they say a few things. First, our online communities may shift from a network of humans to pure social media where everything new posted online is created by a machine or by someone looking to turn a profit with no intended social purpose beyond engagement metrics linked to financial incentives. So honestly, we've seen a lot of that in social media already. We've already seen people outsourcing their social media. We've seen people using AI tools to create content. But I do believe that we're not going to lose the social aspect because it's not just about you as the creator creating the content. It's about us as the consumers connecting with each other around that content. So if you think about this, I can be a behind the scenes creator that has a faceless or an avatar or AI based social media account who is creating community for people who align with the particular message and vision that I am sharing on that account. And they get to connect in the comments. So I believe that, yeah, the the content that's getting pushed out, we've been saying this for a while, there's going to be lots more of the content. There's going to be a lot more of it AI generated and machine generated, right? Can we still leverage that to create community? I believe we can. Second, she says, our online communities may become spaces solely for the most technically advanced individuals to circulate, looking for answers to questions the AI hasn't caught up with, but are for beyond the reach of the average user. So what this person is saying is their assumption is that people use communities for answers. That's their assumption, that the purpose of community is to be able to ask a question and get guidance and get an answer. You and I know this, that is not true. That may be the reason people join in the first place, but that's not what happens within the community. It's especially not why they stay. If all your community does is provide answers, yes, you might be at risk. You will be at risk, let's be honest. But connection doesn't come through question and answer. And that's the assumption that they're making here. And so what they're saying is communities are only going to be created for those technologically or intellectually evolved people who can't get basic answers that ChatGPT or whatever tool can provide. So those are their two main points. And they kind of conclude with this. From these two potential shifts, we can then begin to understand how a lost sense of online community could begin to emerge. What is lost when we move away from building communities and rely on a single source? They're talking, you know, about Reddit and those kinds of communities as well that could be drastically impacted. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe that those kinds of communities like Reddit could definitely see an impact because I don't need to go to howto.com anymore. I don't need to go to reddit.com. I don't need to go to recipes.com to get answers about, you know, how to cook whole chicken or what do I do if I have this kind of stain on my couch? And honestly, in the past and Google, those are the websites that would come up. But I do believe the future is that Google isn't going to direct us to those websites. Google is just going to give us the answer. But here's what I know about myself and here's what I know about you is that when we do something, when we go to get a recipe, for example, we look at reviews. Yeah, I know that ChatGPT and AI can provide five different recipes for cooking a whole chicken. But what I care about are the comments. What I care about are the reviews. What's the rating of of people who, who have actually tested and tried to cook this recipe. How did it go for them? I love every year in the fall when we go to um, cook pumpkin seeds, which I love, my family loves. I like to read the comments for the little nuances of how people soak them or do they add butter or coconut or what seasoning and spices are they adding. The core recipe is there, but the comments is where the real winners are. That isn't going to go away. My desire for that is not going to go away. I am not going to trust an AI machine to tell me insightfully how hard it is to cook this recipe or what could be done differently to make this recipe better based on user feedback. Okay, so I do think there actually is still a place for that and that isn't going to go away. So what can AI do? Well, it can provide us quick answers based on questions that we have. 
right? And if you really want to get customized, like I have in my community creators hub, if you don't have access to that, I can give you free access. Just go to communitycreatorshub.com. You're going to find some amazing resources in there for uh, creating a thriving community. But what you'll also see is the sneaky little thing in the bottom right hand corner, which is a question mark. If you click that question mark, and you can ask it questions about community building and retention. And it is learned from my over 100 podcast episodes. It will give you a thoughtful answer based on what it's learned from my content. And it will even reference where it learned that from my content. So not only can AI give you generic answers, it can actually give people quick answers, customized answers based on my content, based on your content that you create. And when you go to Community Creators Hub, not only can you test it, but if you go into the recommended tools section, I show you the tool that I use to create it and show you how you can create a free account and trial it yourself. Okay. So that is something that it can do. It can help us apply or help our members and customers apply our content. So if you teach a particular framework, it used to be that you needed to do Q&As to really help people apply that framework to their particular business. But now AI tools can help them do that. You can uh, teach the AI tool your framework, and then they can give their specific scenario. I'm a dog trainer or a house painter or whatever it is. And then they can ask the AI to help them apply this framework based on the additional context that they provide. This is an amazing tool for us as content creators to actually help people make more progress and get results by providing shortcuts like this. So this is a way that we can incorporate tools, right? It can point us to the right resources. It can help us find the resources. And let's say you have thousands of trainings inside of your membership. Well, this AI tool can actually help curate for them the training that is best for them. It can work as that kind of guide, that librarian inside of my Cultivate Community Training course for community leaders and managers. I talk about the different roles of community managers. One of those is is a librarian. They are the person who needs to know where all the content is. So that when somebody comes to them and says, I really love romance novels and I've read all Daniel Steele and I'm looking for a new author, but I kind of like this style of romance novel. They are the librarian. They know all of the information they can go, oh, you're looking for this person, this author, it's going to be in this aisle. And here's the one that I recommend you start with. We should be able to do that with our content, but that's really hard as our content libraries grow, which I know mine is, I'm sure yours is as well. That's where AI can step in and help. And it can also give suggestions on direction based on data input. So like I was saying, kind of pointing to the right resource, it can also say, hey, have you thought about um, applying it this way? Or have you thought about doing this, right? So there's a lot that AI can do. And like I said, if your community forum is just a place for people to ask quick questions and get answers, it is at risk. If your membership or your course is just a content library for people to learn more things that they can learn on YouTube or they can ask ChatGPT, then your community is at risk. Your business, your program is at risk. I'm not going to sugarcoat that for you. And I've had to ask those same questions myself, right? Because a lot of what I do is training, right? I have a community training course now, the thing that I have going for me is that course is at a level of expertise and a niche level of expertise for certain online business owners that ChatGPT can't duplicate. It just goes generic. And mine is very specific. It's very niche. But if, again, we just use it as a forum and that forum is for customer support and quick answers, then no, our community isn't going to have value anymore. And we should be afraid of AI. But there are so many opportunities ahead of us. And that's really what I want to focus on is how we can leverage AI to create stronger communities and what we need to be paying attention to. So I'm going to share quite a few things with you because I want to get your brain stirring and your mind turning around how it can go from being the enemy to the partner. How can you leverage the good of AI and make it a partner? We talk about this a lot in one of my first episodes of the podcast. I talk about 
alienation and how we can automate our businesses so much that we alienate our customer. And we don't want to do that. We want to automate to create space for more human to human connection. And this is where AI can come in. And I want you to be the business owner or the community leader that thinks about AI this way. How can I use AI to remove friction and to automate processes or make things easier for my customers so that I can create space for our team to provide more personalization and human to human connection. That is the way I want you thinking about this. So here's one thing I know to be true is that as AI becomes more of a player, that outside of your forum is going to become more valuable. So many of you think of your community as your Facebook group. And I have a whole podcast episode of this. And every time I speak on stage, I'm like harping on this. Community does not equal a Facebook group or a circle group or a money networks group or whatever you're using or a school group, okay? That is not what your community is. Your community are the people that you are interacting with and how they are interacting with each other, getting more connected to each other and more connected to your brand. That's your community. So you have to ask yourself about the spaces When I talk about my four-part framework for creating a thriving community that we go deep in the Cultivate course, one of those is connection. And under that is space. And this is where we're talking about the spaces that we create for our community to connect. And yes, your forum is one of those. And if your forum right now is a question and answer database, essentially, then you've got to ask yourself, how can I make this a place where people connect? And then ask yourself the question of what other spaces should I provide? You know what AI can't do? It can't get on a Zoom meeting in a small group session and help other people connect around brainstorming. It can't help them feel seen in a coaching call. Those are the kinds of things you have the opportunity to do. So my suggestion to you in this area is that if you are currently only doing one-to-many trainings, meaning you're doing things webinar style, they can't see each other's faces, maybe you have a chat, but they can't connect with each other and they can't feel seen by you, try doing meeting style on Zoom if you can to create more connection in a different space. You could also do more in-person, create meetups, et cetera, but you've got to really leverage platforms outside of just that community forum. Second, creating a personalized experience. Now, AI is going to actually empower us to do this. I'm already doing this inside of that community creators hub, like I showed you, where you can go in and ask questions, it's going to answer and give you that more personalized experience. But AI is eventually going to help us curate journeys for people. So when I work with a client one-on-one or in my retain program for retention, the whole goal is to build a journey map of after the sale. A lot of people have journey maps that get people to the sale and then it stops there, right? I focus on everything after the sale. And that journey map is usually one size fits all until we add other layers. We teach this bucket mentality that allows us to customize and add layers based on people's experience in our program. AI is going to make that even easier. I imagine and dream and look forward to a world where we have so much data on the people participating in our programs that we can curate every step of the experience, the communication, the emails that they receive, the interaction that they have, the courses that we're recommending, the pace in which we do it, whether it's audio or whether it's PDF, that all can be customized for them based on what we learn. Because what AI is really great at is taking data and turning it into something, right? To take that data and to learn from it and to improve upon it and to create a better experience. And so that is what I look forward to is a more personalized experience. And you can ask that right now, how can I leverage AI to do that? So outside of your forum is going to be important. Creating a more personalized experience is now even more possible than before. The third is that deep expertise wins. We live in a day and age in the online course and membership creation space where people can create this really high level, super generic, read it in a book one day, now I've kind of made it my own kind of course. That is not going to fly anymore. You cannot create this like cookie cutter, here's how to do X, Y, Z. Here's how to write a great headline. Here's how to be a better copywriter. Here's how to launch a Facebook ad kind of course and expect people to pay for it. Because I can take 15 minutes with my little chat GPT bot, my little AI bot, and I can learn how to do all of that for free. So 
well, not free, maybe 20 bucks a month or whatever the price is at the time you're listening to this, but pretty close to free. A lot cheaper than your 97, 297, 1997 course. So how do you combat against that? Well, you become an expert in your field and you go deep in it. I've been um, doing work in the online space and the community space for over a decade. I've been speaking about it since 2008. This is an expertise. It's a deep expertise that I have. And you want to know what's on my agenda this year? Reading every book I can get my hands on about community and retention. And honestly, in the past, I've actually avoided reading a lot of those books because I don't like to be influenced by other business voices in this space because I think about things very counterculturally than the traditional online community space. So I don't want to be too influenced by their thinking because I really have studied in person communities of old to come up with the philosophies that I have. But this year, I know that I'm so solid in my framework and so solid in what I teach on community. And I've seen it work time and time again to get people results that I'm ready and willing now to to expand outside of that, to deepen my expertise, to take what fits within my framework and vision and throw out the rest, but to go deeper. So that's my encouragement to you. You hear people talk about putting your 10,000 hours or whatever it might be. You don't have to, to become an expert, but you do need to know the right resources, the right people, the right tools to go deep in your area of expertise. So spend less time creating content, being a social media influencer, Influencer, trying to convince people that you're amazing and actually be amazing. Be so good and get such good results and be a thought leader in a space so that your amazingness and your ability to create results is undeniable. And that only comes from deep expertise and experience. So that is going to win in the world of AI. And then fourth, is to know and to be known. We talk a lot about connection on this podcast, but to know and be known and to be accepted when we are known, that, that is core to all of us. We talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the need for connection and that need for belonging. That need for belonging is not just I can fit into this group, right? Because here's the deal. I think about like a sports team or a sorority or something like that. And you finally get accepted into that group and you feel like these are my people, right? But you never really feel known. You've kind of put on a mask. You're pretending to be somebody that you're not to fit into this sorority or fit in with this sports team or this membership or this club or whatever it is. But it's not really you. Do you get the benefit of belonging? No, you don't. And if you've ever experienced this, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where you feel like you're a part of the group, you feel like you're a part of this community, but you know deep down inside that they don't know the real you. And if they only knew the real you, they wouldn't like you. They wouldn't want you here. And that's the thought that we have. So to know your members and to know them outside of I'm a teacher, right? That is where the win is going to come. And I talked about this just on a recent episode about seeing people outside of the core purpose and reason that they joined your program. Yeah, I serve community leaders for sure. But in my retained program, I ask them about their hobbies. I I want to get to know them because they are a person outside of that particular role. And that key piece of making those kinds of connections, those personal connections where people can be known is going to be really important. So helping people share, feel safe enough to share is something that is going to only increase in value. So you need to be asking yourself that question of do people in my community actually feel known by me? Okay, outside of your forum is more and more important and valuable. Personalized experiences are now more possible than ever. Deep expertise is going to win. You need people to be known, to feel known and accepted. Five, being a thoughtful and empathic leader. Being a partner with them. People keep asking the question, is AI going to be sentient? Is AI going to be able to feel human emotions and respond to them in accordance with other human emotions. Honestly, I don't know. I hope not. I think that we are really just scratching the surface ourselves as humans in the field of science and psychology to really understand even the chemicals and the science and the brain science behind human emotions. We still don't really understand it. And if you have ever dealt with 
a mental illness or struggled with something like depression or anxiety or bipolar or any of those kinds of concerns I've walked through with family members that struggle. You know that we don't have it figured out. No counselor, no therapist, no prescription drug, no herbal supplement has been the cure-all for all of this. And so my belief is that actually there's such a deep well that we still don't understand of human emotion that AI is not anywhere near being sentient, nor will it ever. What does that mean for you as a leader? That means that being thoughtful and empathic is going to set you apart. We talk a lot about providing the next step and about guiding people. But you know what we also talk about a lot, especially when we talk about onboarding, it's the mindset. 80% of the thing that is getting in their way is mindset. It's that coaching. It's knowing what is holding them back and being able to relate to that, but pull them beyond it. That takes thoughtfulness. That takes empathy. That takes understanding the human condition and the human brain and going, yeah, all the logic in the world says you should do X, Y, and Z. You have every reason to do X, Y, and Z because you're in pain because you're not doing X, Y, and Z. And there's all these amazing things on the other side. If you do X, Y, and Z, AI is going to be like, oh, well, that's all they need to know. They're in pain. Here's all the logical reasons they need to do this. But that is not how our brains work. That is not how our emotions work. And being somebody who can recognize and pull out of them what has them stuck to help them move forward beyond that so that they can start getting momentum and taking action, that thoughtfulness and empathy is going to be rare and highly valued. All right, so I think that was number five. We're going to say number six. Like I said, I have a long list. Creating gathering places for multi-person collaboration and conversation. When I read this article about AI's impact on community, this person was not talking about collaboration. She wasn't really talking about conversations. She was talking about an individual going to a community to ask a question to get an answer. That was her view on community. But that's not my view. And if you listen to this podcast for any amount of time, it's not your view either. So what does that mean for us? That means we need to ask ourselves about how we're creating gathering places for multi-person collaboration and conversation. How are we facilitating conversation among our members? How are we facilitating collaboration and co-coaching and uh, peer support and brainstorming inside of our communities? I talk a lot about brainstorm sessions and breakout sessions on Zoom. We've been leveraging those for years for some of the the clients that I've worked with. They are game changers and they will continue to be, whether that's an in-person space or an online space in a Zoom call, a forum, whatever it might be. But how can we create the internal communication that I talk about in one of my pillars where these conversations are happening amongst our members, amongst our community, and they are able to connect and collaborate. Because guess what? You as the expert are not going to be as valuable. Sorry, but once you've created the content and you've uploaded it to these AI engines that can learn from that content, you being on a Q&A actually doesn't have as much value unless you're working with them and coaching them through those kinds of thoughtful empathy mindset kind of things that we talked about. But they are going to need to come to you to ask a question about how to apply what they learned because guess what? They can do that inside of AI tools. Okay, so what do they need? They need peer-to-peer support. They need peer-to-peer collaboration. They need accountability. They need conversations and connection. And that's what we have to be trying to facilitate. That's what we need to be asking ourselves. How are we doing that better? And then finally, using AI to make connecting easier. And this comes from, I may do a whole podcast episode on this, but my friend Jamie, who's been on the podcast before, she's a fellow community lover, sent me an article about Mighty Networks. And there are a lot of community tools and platforms out there. I'm a big proponent that the platform is not the problem. Stop thinking that you can change platforms and you know your community is magically going to be better. In my course, actually, I have a whole module about creating the space and a whole lesson and frameworks and PDF guides to help you break down the platform that is right for you because it is a very personalized choice. So I don't want you to think that, oh, Shana said Mighty Networks or Shana did that interview with Sam Ovens, the founder of school. So this is what Shana recommends because I never have a one-size-fits-all approach. 
But I am curious as to what these community platforms are doing, which ones are going to be left in the stone age because they are not leveraging AI, and which ones are moving forward and leveraging AI in positive ways. So this article that was sent to me is about Mighty Networks and how just one simple thing that they are doing to leverage AI is creating more connection. They are basically emphasizing profile, which is great. We'll probably talk about that on the other podcast episode. They're emphasizing the profile, but they're leveraging AI to help them make connections even faster. So one of my past clients is the Female Entrepreneur Association with Carrie Green. Absolutely love her. Her heart for community is so, so big and strong. It's incredible. She, for a long time, has been trying to connect her community members, both in person online with some custom tools that she had built where she can match up accountability partners pretty easily and and really has relied on profiles in order to do that. Now, imagine layering AI into that. So I know your goals in joining. I know your stage. I know about your business or about your hobbies or your interests. I know where you live. And I want to help you find your people within our group. We talk all the time about scaling. How do we scale? I have clients with 14,000 members, 10,000 plus members, right? How do we scale at that point? Well, we have to help them find their people within the people. We have to help them find their community within the community. And AI can make that even more possible. And that's what Mighty Networks is doing, where they're leveraging profile information to basically pop up and say, hey, welcome to the community. We think you would really love to meet Sally, Joe, and Bob because they have these things in common. They all live in Nashville or they all are adoptive parents or they're all working in this stage. Would you like us to make a connection with you to Sally, Joe, and Bob? Right? How cool is that? How cool is that? You don't have to wade and wade through all the posts to try and find your people because here's what I know in working with communities, as long as I have, there are so many missed connections. Have you ever like... I know our little community has a 411 Facebook group, and there's all sorts of things that get posted there all the time. But if you remember missed connections, which was like the, oh, I saw this cute person with a jacket and like brown boots in line at Dollar General, and you looked up at me, and then, you know, I had to run to the restroom, and then you were gone by the time I got back. If you saw me, please reach out. There used to be like a whole thing about missed connections. Well, sometimes those actually pop up in our little community still. But inside of our memberships, there are so many missed connections because people aren't able to easily find the people who are like them. They're uncommon commonalities. We just talked about that in an episode, but those uncommon commonalities that connect people together are missing. They can't find them. They've got to be super engaged. They've got to be on that Facebook post where people talked about this particular thing in your forum. You know, all of those missed connections of people who come in, come back out, And they missed building a relationship with somebody who is so much like them, who is perfect for them, who's local to them. That's one of the reasons I honestly love the breakout session calls, because just by divine intervention, oftentimes people end up on a call with people who are in the same city or in a very similar situation. You wouldn't believe they're like, I had no idea there was somebody who lived five minutes away from me in this membership. We're going to get coffee together once a month and chat. And those make them lifetime customers of that community because they made that connection through your community. So using AI to help us do that even better because we have profile information and data. We get to know these people, remember outside of just their business or who they are, why they joined your membership. And then we can help connect them with other people like them to make those connection points really easy in the onboarding journey. That is gold, gold. We've talked about how important onboarding is, and we've talked about how important having them make at least three connections in the first, you know, 30 days, 21 days is so valuable because they need that to feel connected. They need that to feel safe and AI can make that much easier. So keep an eye out. And if you're using a community platform that isn't Mighty Networks, I mean, reach out to them and ask and say, are you looking to do things like this? How are you leveraging AI to help us connect our members more and to create a more personalized experience for them? In fact, just send them this episode. Like I would love for all of the community platforms out there, school, circle, mining networks, I mean, Beehive, there's like 50,000 of them now. I would love for 
their support emails to be just bombarded with people sending them this episode and saying, tell me, listen to this. What is your plan for leveraging AI to help us create stronger connections and a stronger community? Because I want to know, I want to know what these platforms have going on. All right. So we as community creators and cultivators are not afraid of AI. We know that there is good, bad, and ugly with everything. And we're going to choose to see the good. And here's the thing, the technology is coming and you have to ask yourself the impact that you want to leave in the world. And I know for me, I want to help people create communities where people can show up fully because when they have a place where they are fully known and that they can belong, they show up more fully in the world, in their lives, in their day to day. And that just creates a better world for all of us. That's what I want. And so I have to ask myself, how can I leverage the good of AI to make that vision more possible? How can we take aspects of it and create stronger communities and deeper connections? And, and these are your opportunities here. And I'll, I'll go through them really quick again. Outside of your forum is more valuable. Don't rely on your forum anymore. Start creating additional spaces, whether it's Zoom calls, in person, whatever it might be. Creating a more personalized experience for them. Deep expertise wins. Go deep, know your stuff because ChatGPT is going to beat you if you are not becoming an expert in something. How can we help them be known? Be known outside of just they're another course creator in this course creator membership. How can we help them be known beyond that? And then how can we be thoughtful and empathetic partner? How can we be a thoughtful and empathetic leader so that on their journey, they're getting that human experience that customizes and factors in the 80% of mindset stuff that's holding them back? How can we create gathering places for multi-person collaboration and conversation, getting people to work with each other instead of just relying on me as the expert? And then finally, how can we use AI to make connecting easier, to make finding uncommon commonalities easier to make finding your people within your people easier. I really hope that you ask yourself these questions, that you sit down with your team, have them listen to this episode, because guess what? Your team probably knows more about AI than you do at this point. They have been trying it and innovating and learning and listening because they honestly probably have more time to. So get your team together to innovate around these ideas and ask how you can leverage AI in these ways to create these kinds of experiences so that you and your community and your content are not left in the dust as we move very, very fast into this AI dominated age. Let's make sure that we are not using this to alienate, but we are using it to create more space for human to human connection and to actually enhance our communities and help them be better leveraged by those who are in them and taking advantage of them. All right, friends, I do hope this is one of those episodes. I don't ask this much, but if this episode was valuable, will you please leave a review? Reviews actually matter. I didn't think they really matter. And honestly, I really haven't ever cared anything about podcast ranking, but I keep getting told, Shannon, your podcast is amazing. And I haven't heard about it because you're not ranked because you don't have enough reviews. So two things that help with that are reviews, which I would love It'd take two seconds just to leave a review and put a rating in there. And then two, share this because this is the conversation we need to be having about AI as community leaders and creators, not the fear, right? Let's have this conversation about how we're going to leverage it because it's coming. There's nothing we can do about it.